This video is about the persecution God's people will face in the end time, how they are going to be persecuted, and the other part of the video is how you can prepare yourself for the coming trouble. So what happens when it comes to the end time persecution? We've read in our scripture reading, thank you Sister Baumgarten for reading for us. When that persecution comes our way, what we've learnt is that it doesn't require Congress or the Supreme Court or the Presidency to put this persecution, these tools of persecution in place. What we realize as we read Revelation is that we may face real persecution from the government without all these normal mechanisms being in place and all it requires is a political excuse to make it happen. That's all it requires is a political excuse. So what may happen to Adventists based on what we've seen in COVID-19? COVID well we're going to see that um, our civil and religious liberties will be revoked. We've discovered so far in COVID that your constitutional rights are hardly worth the paper they're written on. Our constitutional rights will be revoked. The First Amendment, the freedom to worship God or not to worship God, will effectively be rendered meaningless. It doesn't require an act of Congress. We're likely to see the closing of all our church buildings, our colleges, our conferences, our unions, our divisions, supporting ministries, all Adventist institutions may well be closed. We'll discover that evangelism will be declared to be hate speech. It is already happening in some parts of the world that are more secular. But the proclamation of the gospel, the call to repentance, is a repudiation of the doctrine of safe spaces on our college campuses. The doctrine of safe spaces on college campuses means that nothing can be allowed to, to question or cause some discomfort to your personal lived experience. And so we create safe spaces on our college campuses and the call to repent is no longer welcome on many college campuses because that is a denial of your safe space. And so evangelism and preaching the everlasting gospel will eventually be declared to be hate speech because the call to repentance implies that your subjective lived experience is not valid. That's the implication. We will be defamed, deplatformed on social media, and cancelled from public culture. This has not happened in America yet, but uh, I see that some, some members in this congregation here, I know some of you come from former Eastern Europe, and you know what it is like that Christians and Adventists were, were persecuted. They were locked away. The, closed, the churches were closed down. And sooner or later it's going to come our way and we will be deplatformed on social media and our voice taken away from us. Our ability to buy, sell, bank and travel will be suspended probably for all time until Jesus comes again. We've seen it happening right now over COVID. And one day those tools can be turned on God's people and we will discover that your IRA, your bank account, your credit card will be worthless in the final crisis. It will mean absolutely nothing. We may find that our savings, our IRAs, investment accounts will be frozen never to be used again. We'll be unable to pay our mortgages or our rents, thus we'll be forced from our homes and our possessions will be gone. Bit by bit the world will take away the things that many of us hold very dear. We'll be demonized across the political spectrum and in all media as Jesus himself told us, you'll be hated by all men for my name's sake, Mark 13 and verse 13. We also see that, or I anticipate, and this isn't a, a prophecy, uh, but this is based on what we see right now, if you are on the streets and you don't comply with the dominant narrative, what happened in Portland recently, you can be shot down in the streets. Or mobs will attack you. Uh, this isn't a political statement, this is a statement of fact. And uh, state bureaucrats, drunk on the powers of emergency di di uh, di directives, can make all kinds of rulings against you and you have no way of appealing those. Track and trace apps on our phones will trace our every movement and our smart devices will record every word that we ever utter. Our children may indeed be forcibly removed by child protective services to be pre placed within protective custody within the foster system. You say, well, that could never happen. I served for 12 years in the former Soviet Union. I met many devoted Adventists, babushkas, by then they were babushkas, grandmas, whose children were taken from them. They were forcibly divorced by the KGB precisely because they were Adventists. I met one lady who hadn't seen her children for 45 years. When the Soviet Union collapsed, she tracked them down to the city of Rostov-on-Don, and it was a glorious reunion to see her children again. Don't think that governments will not take the children of those who disagree with the government on religious grounds. It's happened throughout the Soviet Union and one day it may happen in our shores. The only thing that remains is a political excuse 
for politicians to turn all these tools of oppression on God's faithful remnant. And if you're kind of depressed about this, well, yeah, I'm kind of depressed about it as well. But the good news is Jesus is coming again. And if you look at the statue of Daniel 2, we don't have time to look at it now, the very, when, when, when Daniel see, talks about the dream, we focus on the interpretation of the head of gold and the chest and arms of silver and so forth. But the first thing that Daniel says about the text, he says, I saw this dream and this, this image in the dream and the, the, the image was terrifying. We, miss, we, we kind of skirt over that little phrase. Daniel says that the image is terrifying, which means that all earthly powers from Daniel to the coming of Jesus have a terrifying element to them. No matter what we may say about our nations, where we come from, earthly nations, when push comes to shove, have a terrifying element about them. So, how do we prepare for such persecution? This video is about how you can...